In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I created this self-portrait. One of the things I like to do is take a self-portrait every month if I have the time and I'm in the headspace to do so. And what I'll do each month is I'll try something different, a different lighting method, a different style, different technique. And one of my goals is not only just to update my self-portrait, because I feel like that's important for a photographer, but also to experiment and grow in my knowledge of lighting. So for August, I decided to try something a little different and I posted the results on my YouTube community page and asked people if they wanted me to do a video on it. People said, yes, so here we are. So how did I create this shot? Well, like any portrait, it started with a vision I had for it. And I knew going into it that I wanted to use two backdrops and kind of position myself in the corner of a sort of right angle. And I also knew that I wanted to use a posing table, which is something I use quite a bit because a posing table um, helps people to be able to do a lot more natural things with their arms than if they're just standing there awkwardly holding their arms up. So that's why I use the posing table. And it's just something I like to do. I do it often. Once I figured out the basic idea, okay, I want to have two backdrops sort of catty corner myself in uh, an almost right angle. It wasn't quite a right angle, but it was almost a right angle. And I wanted to also add some kind of dramatic effect with my optical spot. So I had an idea of what I wanted to do going into it. The first thing I did was I set up my artery backdrops. I set up my table. Um, and then I decided the lighting I wanted to use. Now, the lighting that I used for this photo was based on Felix Kuhn's signature lighting. And so I knew I wanted to use a large modifier, which I had placed camera left of me and feathered very heavily. So the main light in this setup is just a large umbrella. It's a Westcott umbrella in an alien beast flash. And it's just placed almost at a right angle to my face off to my, my right side, camera left side. So that was the key light. And then once I had that in place, I added the fill light. So there's really only three lights I use for this setup. So the fill light, I've done this in the past and I found it to be pretty cool and successful. And this is something that I also learned from Felix and, and it's sort of a modified version of his lighting. Um, is I took the fill light and I have in my studio, the ceilings are about 10 feet high and they're, they're white sheetrock. So I just took a light, put it as high as possible and pointed it at the ceiling. And it was about, I would say about 10 feet from me and pointing away from me. So it, so basically the fill light bounced into the background, bounced off the ceiling and off the back wall and reflected back on me. Third and final thing I did was I added the Westcott optical spot. Now, I really love the optical spot. I think it's, it's such a cool modifier and you can do so many things with it. And I still feel like I'm kind of only scratching the surface of it with the way I've used it. But basically um, it comes with a bunch of gobos and if you don't know what a gobo is, it's a go between, which is a small disc with a pattern on it. And so you put that into the lighting um, device, and then there's a lens that goes on the front of it, and it'll reflect specific patterns onto your subject. Um, that's the hardest thing for me to get where I like it. It's not hard, it just takes time, I should say. So what you have to do is you have to really angle it. And then with my alien bees, they don't have great modeling lights. So it's, um, I find myself having to fiddle with it quite a bit to get it where I like it. But I just, I wanted to use that sort of, I, I thought it looked like more like window panes, but people commenting on the photos said I look like I'm in prison. So whatever, either way you can, you can say I'm in prison or I'm in front of a, a very detailed window pane. Uh, and so I positioned that light the way I liked it and got it to where I felt like it was the right intensity and everything. And then I projected that on me. Um, what I also did with the optical spot, and I will add that I did a full review on the optical spot. I will post it in the description in case you want to find out more about that particular device. Uh, I think it's really cool and I've used it on a bunch of shoots now and, and it really does help you to create some dramatic effects. Anyway, so I took the optical spot and I added a yellow, um, filter gel 
on the front of the lens. So I was wearing a blue shirt and my backgrounds were sort of bluish gray. And so the majority of the scene outside of the tabletop is all cool colors. So I wanted to, I knew that when I was gonna color grade the photo, I wanted to keep it towards cooler colors and then eventually add a little bit of warmth. So my idea was that, so it looked almost like light reflecting through a window, that the light from the gobo hitting me and making that jail cell pattern or window pattern, whatever you want to call it, would be more of a yellowish color. So it seemed like maybe a little sunlight coming in on an otherwise cool scene. Now, as far as the power goes, I had the fill light power pretty low. So maybe about, I would say about 10 to 12% on the fill light. The key light was maybe at 30%. And the gobo was actually the strongest light out of the three. And that was probably around 40% power. Um, and then you can use the lens on the front of the gobo to make the lines the edges of the light hard or soft. So I wanted it to be very hard. So it seemed like sun coming through a window strongly like a midday sun. And that's what I did. And there you have it. Then I created this raw image. Um, and that's really half the battle. So uh, anyone who follows my work knows that when it comes to my portraits, I love to color grade. And so it's rare that I'll send a portrait out of the studio that's not color graded, unless it's something that doesn't call for it for a specific reason. Lots of times, if it's some kind of special corporate reason or if I'm going for matching someone's branding already. But anyway, I knew I wanted to color grade it. So the next step in my process is that I drag the photo into Affinity Photo and that's where I started color grading it. And this, this is where I love to do the majority of my editing. In fact, it's rare at this point that I even use Photoshop. There's one or two things I'll use Photoshop for at this point, but really most of my editing happens in Affinity Photo. And so I, I definitely recommend you check out Affinity. I'm not endorsed by them or anything, but they are an awesome company, an awesome software, and it's it's very inexpensive. So last I checked, it was somewhere around $60 for the program, and it basically does more or less everything you can do in Photoshop, and the interface is very intuitive and easy to understand, so I like it a lot. Okay, so let me show you what I did when I dragged that into Affinity, and I'll go over some of those, those settings and whatnot with you. All right, so here we are in Affinity, and now this isn't my completed image. This is actually one step before I finish the image. So basically, you start out with the background here, and I will, let me just um, take away all of that. So this, what I do is I take the raw image, and then I actually import it into Affinity lighter and less contrasty than I want it to end up because when you add color grading, what happens is you're adding a lot of contrast and you'll darken the photo. So you want to leave room for that. Then I basically start with a curves layer. Layer, I'll throw the curves layer on. And in the curves layer, you're going to do most of your work. And you work with each channel, red, green, and blue until you get the color tones you want. So you can make it cool, you can make it warm, you can do whatever you want with it. You can accentuate one color over another. But I, as I said, I knew I wanted to go towards the cool color, so that's what I did. And then I applied a master um, S-curve to the whole thing. And that gives you the basic look. Now, there were some things I didn't like about this coloring. Like I felt like it was a little greenish and I wanted to pull that out. So what I did is I used another layer, hue saturation layer, and I just took out a little bit of the green. So you can see greenish, a little bit less green. I thought that worked better. And then I applied one of these um, overlays, which uh, I got from my mentor, Ivan Weiss. And this overlay, it's just like a textured pattern with a color. And I usually roll out, when I apply one of these, I roll out most, if not all of the color. Sometimes I'll leave it in to taste. Um, and you can see it adds a little bit more of the warmth and it also gives a little bit more depth. Uh, after that, I used a dark and a light curves layer. And what that does is it allows you to paint in 
the shadows and the highlights so that you can kind of give it a little bit more of that painted portrait look. And you have to be careful with that because it's easy to overdo it, but that was the next step. And then when I get the photo to a point where I like it, and again, I knew that this wasn't my final image as color wise, I knew I wanted to do one other step I'll show you, but I did realize that uh, this was as close as I was gonna get it in Affinity. The final thing I'll do, so even if I was done color grading, is I'll apply a levels layer and I'll just, because usually it's gonna be at this point a little bit probably dark. Um, and so I'll bring up the uh, levels, the, I'll show you the layer here. Uh, I usually bring the, the right side of the histogram to where it's just touching the colors. Sometimes I'll crush the colors. Sometimes I'll go a little bit more or a little bit less. So there's no rules here, but generally I'll do that. And then sometimes I'll bring the blacks in to the corner of the other side of the histogram. Here I didn't do that because I felt like it was already contrasty enough. And there you have it. That's how I created the basic image, um, lighting and color grading. The last step I did was to bring it into Dehancer, which um, is a um, like a film simulation program that I've been using that I really like. And, and full disclosure, they do sponsor my channel and I have a little promo code. But if you're looking to get some cool film simulations, you can use my name, Pete Coco, and you'll get 10% off. But anyway, putting that aside, um, I've been using Dehancer as a way to kind of tweak photos if I feel like I haven't been able to get it to where I really like it in the color grading. And that's, that's what I did as a final step with this photo. And I couldn't decide what I liked, so I tried a number of different sims, and I really liked this simulation, which is a Roly CN200 film simulation. Now, what it did is obviously it mood, adds a lot of mood and a lot more depth to it, but it still has some of the warmth not as yellowish. So that's where I wound up with it. And then I also added a, one of my favorite Sims from Dehancer, uh, cause I couldn't decide if I liked the black and white or the color is the Ilford um, HP5 plus 400 uh, Sim. And so this creates really nice black and whites and you don't have to spend hours tweaking it. So I tried that as well and I like that. So here's the before and the after. So you can see it's not, it's not a tremendous difference. Really what I did was I took out a little bit of the yellow. I kind of muted all the colors and dehancer and got it to a place where I really liked it. And, and I, I think it works, you know, as a composition. And that's basically it. Here's my overall uh, advice to you. The first thing I'll say is you have to experiment, obviously, right? We all know that as photographers, but the most important thing to do is constantly experiment with lighting constantly challenge yourself with lighting and constantly learn from people. So I've learned from a number of different photographers and I'm still learning a ton. Obviously there's so many people um, who are way, way, way better at this than me. So I know I still have a lot to learn, but like, you know, I've, I can list on people I've, who I've mentored with or who I've gone to workshops with Peter Hurley, Ivan Weiss, um, John Gress, um, Felix Coons. So learn from the masters, learn from the people who really have been doing this a long time and know how to do it. Find someone whose work inspires you and learn from them. And uh, that's what I'm still doing. I, I, I love it. I love growing as a portrait artist and as someone who understands how to work with light. And like I said, I know I have a, a long, long way to go, but every day I try to challenge myself and do something. So, so you got to keep learning. I will also add that if you're interested in really learning how to color grade, like how to do it really well, because people have been asking me a lot about, uh, can you do a video on how you color grade? I can, I mean, I might at some point, but really the person who I learned this from, who is the master, in my opinion, at this is Ivan Weiss. So contact Ivan if you wanna learn how to color grade. Um, and in fact, I'm pretty sure he's got some videos up. So I'll link his YouTube channel in the description because I'm pretty sure he's done some uh, color grading tutorials with Affinity. So that's where you really need to go. I'm happy to, to help people with any kind of their color grading journey or their portrait journey, but he's where I really learned from. So that's my suggestion for you.
All right, that's, that's all I got for you today. I hope that you found this little video to be mildly entertaining, but also very educational. As always, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, if you have a specific thing that you do that you want to share with me, I'd love to hear what everyone else is doing because I got to tell you, I learned so much from the comments and I feel like people really teach me a lot of things that I don't know, whether it's about uh, photographic gear or about a technique for lighting or for shooting. So definitely throw that in there. I will also say that I feel like my channel is really a work in progress. I don't feel like I've figured out exactly the direction I want to go. So I know some people really want me to do lighting videos. And then there's other people who really love when I do a gear review. And then some people even love when I just rant about <laughs> cameras and, and camera news. So at this point, I haven't decided one way or another that I'm going to hundred percent do this or that. So I hope you're enjoying whatever I put out there. Um, and as a reminder, I, I randomly post videos at all times of day and night. So definitely hit the notification bell. If you want to know when the next video is coming out, gently press that like button. You do not have to smash it. And I wish you all a wonderful day. Go out and take some awesome pictures today and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.